important is that he's yeah. living. Yeah. yeah. Like we can read the Bible, but then when you hear testimonies of what God is doing yes. over in Mexico, yeah. and then I went home to New Jersey, and yes, that's my home. But when I came back here, I was like, oh, I'm home. Yes. Like you know. But in New Jersey, I met with some friends of mine that actually were conducive to me getting saved, and they're all doing a work in New Jersey. Like literally, I hear about these um, teen challenges being raised up for the glory of God, and what there's what the Lord is doing over there in my mom's church, what the Lord is doing there in Ocean City, New Jersey, what the Lord is doing there. We sat there and shared testimony after testimony, and the Lord had been speaking to Naya, and it took me a little while to kind of you know hear the voice of God that you're not alone. Yes, you know sometimes we can feel like we're here, and I always say on the bayou because that's where we're at. Um, And you feel like sometimes, God, you're moving here, but are we the only people? Are we the only people that sense your presence, that are hungry for your presence, that want you to move to the degree that we want you to move? And the Lord was just showing me, Angela, you're not the only people. There's more. There's more that are believing. There's more that are trusting because in the midst of our circumstances, we can get discouraged. Okay, we can get consumed. Um, Just like Brendan was saying, he was talking about fear. I understand anxiety. I understand fear. I understand where it paralyzes you to the degree that you can't even feel like you can get up in the morning anymore. Where the enemy comes in and tries to steal your faith where you can't even feel like you can put your feet on the ground. There's been times that I'm like, God, am I even called to preach? Am I even called to do that? I don't even know what I'm doing some days that I wake up in the morning. But thank God for the Spirit of God. He reminds you. He will remind you who you are. He will remind you what you're called to do. He will remind you what he's done for you. He will remind you if you open up our ears, sometimes our ears get shut. And you know what? That's because sometimes our circumstances just become so big and so painful that we forget to look up. Yes. But if I can say one thing to you this morning that you'll remember is look up. Yes. Look up. Um, we were driving from New Jersey back here, and there's this song that I was listening to, and the words, the chorus of it says, Oh, my soul, remember who you're talking to. The one who death bows to. That's the God who walks with you. Sometimes we have to remind our soul, yes, yes. remember who you're talking to. Yes. He's the God that death bows to and he walks with you. Sometimes we have to rem- be reminded of the God that we serve. Yes, Lord. My message is entitled, A Little Bit of Oil, But a Big God. Yes. <laughs> a Little Bit of Oil. But a big God. I'm in 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 1. And I pray that the Lord he has his way this morning. And I know that he already has been. And he gives me the words to speak directly from him to you. God help me to zone in and, and on exactly what you want me to say. God you know the needs of your people and you know exactly what we need. God each one of us have been talking to you. God, and even some circumstances, we can't even open up our mouth to speak because it's so painful, we don't even know what to say. God, but you said that deep cries out to deep. God, that you hear the cry of the hearts of your people. God, and you won't leave us. You won't forsake us. You're a father to the fatherless. God, you are the one that is with the orphan and the widow. God, you are the one that sees, that knows, and that doesn't just leave us there, but moves. God, so I pray. God, we have a little bit of oil, but we serve a big God. God, increase our faith this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. And the scripture reads, Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant did fear the Lord. And the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. And Elisha said unto her, 
her, what shall I do for you? Tell me, what have you in the house? And she said, your handmaid has not anything in the house save a pot of oil. Hallelujah for the oil. Yes, then he said, go borrow you vessels abroad of all your neighbors, even empty vessels. Borrow not a few. See, what God is going to do is going to be a big thing. He doesn't want us to have meager rations. He said, borrow not a few. And when you are come in, you shall shut the door upon you and upon your sons and shall pour out into all those vessels and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him. She shut the door upon her and her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured out. Yes. She poured out. And it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said unto her son, bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, there is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. Then she came and told the man of God. And he said, go sell the oil and pay your debt and live. Mm. Pay your debt and live. You and your children Hallelujah. of the rest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want to encourage you this morning that God knows. Sometimes I feel like in my own walk, God, are you there? Yeah. God, do you see? God, do you know? But he is always present. Amen. And he is always there. And not only does he know, but he's all powerful. So he's able to meet your need. Yes. He knows exactly what you need, exactly in the time that you need it. And sometimes I feel like we're like, God, are you there? God, do you know? But then, see, the timing is God, of God is most important as the will of God in our lives. Amen. See, he's preparing a people. Yes. Brendan, he's preparing you as yes. a priest of your household. Yes. I thank God for you because when you were standing up here I seen a man of God oh, that was goodness. taking the steps for his family Amen. that was going to be raised up in the ways of God positioning himself to hear from God so you can protect and defend your family as a man of God Amen. and I thank God for you yeah. I thank God for that yeah. and Elijah that's who she was speaking to she was speaking to Elijah and Elijah, if you don't know who Elijah was, he was an understudy of Elijah for 10 years. And what I love about this story is I go back, I'm, I'm really into content and what happens before you come to a story. And what I love about this is they seen miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. Elijah called down fire from heaven yes. and it happened. Elijah said that the king would die and he did. Elijah stuck the mantle in the Jordan and it opened. Yes. Elijah and Elijah, they, they were running side by side and they seen miracle after miracle. And Elijah said to Elisha, what shall I do for you? The same question that he asked the widow. And what I love about that is that God doesn't just speak to prophets or preachers or kings. He speaks to widows. Yes. He wants to know what the widow needed. Yes. He wants to know what you need this morning. Sometimes we can think that God is only speaking to the man of God or to the worship leader or to whoever it is that's in a position of authority. But God wants to speak to the widow this morning. He wants to speak to the one that's in need this morning. She said, I'm your handmaiden. That means that this family was living for God. That God was in the midst of this family. And this tragedy still happened. Yes. Think about that for a minute. Good. It said that he was a pro servant. Your husband was a servant. And I was your handmaiden. And the husband still died. Mm. This tragedy still happened. This distress still came oh. to this household. But 
with the same question that Elijah asked Elijah when he gave him an answer. He said, I want a double portion. Yes. I, and I'm asking that for this church this morning. Yes.
Now put floor. God, I'm dry. Yeah. God, I'm hurting. God, listen, I'll be real with you, and I, I've been getting real with you, so don't take don't take it and run with it, okay? But the last couple weeks, I was really at a place in my walk where I was like, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. Help us. I don't know if I want to live for God anymore. Because, and look, I know our eyes get real big, but you know what? If you really evaluate your own heart, you probably were there. Oh, amen. Okay, you probably were there at some point in time in your walk that said, I don't know if I can do this anymore. Because the enemy from without and the enemy from within are working together to get my focus, your focus, off course. And when we stare at that thing that's bothering us or coming against us or that we're dealing with, and our focus is only that thing, you can get to the point where you say, I don't know if I can do this anymore. But let me tell you, God knows how to come in, and he knows how to sweep you off your feet, and he knows how to fill you back up, and he knows how to say, and it's like sometimes just a whisper like, Angela, come on, keep going. Come on, Angela, keep going. Come on, Angela, keep believing. I got good things for you. Just keep believing. Sometimes we can quit before the miracle happens. We can quit before the miracle happens. And that's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to get our focus so off course that we quit. And at this point, the country is dry. I don't know if you're dry this morning. But God wants you to do something. He says in the valley, dig ditches. In the valley, dig ditches. Start digging ditches of belief. Start digging ditches of faith. I haven't seen it yet, God, but I'm going to keep believing. I don't know what's going on, God. Everything looks like it's against me, but keep believing. Keep believing and dig ditches in the valley. And then it says, for thus saith the Lord, you shall not see wind. You shall not see rain. Yet the valley shall be filled, that you may drink, both you and your cattle and your beast. What that says to me is we're, we're not, we might not see it coming, but he's working. We might not feel it, but he's working. We might not understand it, but he's working. He said just don't quit. Keep digging ditches in the valley, and all of a sudden there's going to be rain, and it's going to fill the whole valley, and you and you and you and you and you and your families shall be able to drink from this water. Just keep digging ditches in the valley. And then the scripture says, but this is but a light thing in the sight of the Lord. He will deliver you. I was like, wow, they are dry. That, that country had been dry, I believe it's about three years. If I stand corrected, then don't hold that against me. But it was about three years that they were dry. And the Moabites were coming, and they're digging ditches in a valley. Could you imagine that? I sat there and thought, I was like, man, it was probably laborious. Yeah. It was probably painful. Yeah. I mean, it took, it took effort. And they were probably hungry and tired out there continuing to believe. And God, I don't see no rain. Yeah. I don't see no rain. I don't hear. I don't see on the forecast that the rain is coming. But I'm out here working and working. Man, I wake up some days and I'm like, are you serious, Lord? Are we doing this again, Lord? I, look, we can have halos if you want to, but I serve a real God that wants me to be real with him Amen. so he can change my heart, so he can show me some things about myself Amen. and show me some things about his glory. Yeah. So yeah. Yes. God is the God of the impossible, and I want to tell you this. He's going to take that which is little that you have, and he's going to make it great. Yes. He wants us to bring him our little so he can multiply it and make it great. He's going to take our low point in our condition and fill us up. He heard the cry of the widow, and he didn't leave her there. It says, Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elijah, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead. You know that your servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take him and my two sons away. You are not forgotten, and he hears her heart, he hears her condition, and this is the condition. She was helpless. Yeah. The widow at the time, at this time in society, was completely helpless. Yeah. She was a, known as a social misfit. She had no provision for her and her family. Sometimes we can feel like that, God, are you going to provide for us? 
There was no head of the household now. There was no one to represent her. She was known, life was harsh for an orphan and a, a widow. There was depression, poverty, and bondage. She was forced to beg for food. She was home, she suffered with her home, her livestock, and her land. Without a husband, it was greatly tough to exist during this time. And he was gone. And I think about that in, in our own lives. Have we ever felt helpless? Do we ever felt like we just don't fit in, in, in anywhere and we're just completely rejected? That maybe we don't have the provisions that we need. That we're trying to take care of our family and we're doing everything that we can to take care of our families. But this depression, this depression begins to set in upon us and this oppression begins to set and a fear begins to grip us and we're forced to ask for help. Listen, let me tell you this. This is something I learned a long time ago. Don't feel too prideful to ever ask for help. Amen. Amen. Okay, I don't mean just in the natural, but I even mean in the spirit or I even mean in the emotional. Like ask a friend, can you come over and pray for me? Can you can come over and just sit with me? Amen. You know, there's been times in my life that I'm like, man, I'm going to tough this out. I got it. And God just shows me, Angela, we need the body of Christ. Right. We need to be able to lean upon one another. Right. I mean, I'll just be real and put myself out there. I went to P Pastor Matt recently and I was like, look, if I don't sit in a service, I'm going to be in some trouble because I'm feeling dry. Amen. Okay, sometimes we can be working for the Lord and pouring out so much into our families and pouring out so much on the job and pouring out and pouring out and then all of a sudden we look up and we're like, whoa, yeah. wait, hold on. I'm missing something for me. Yeah. See, we must sit with the Lord on our own. We must get a word from God on our yeah. own. I'm not talking about for your family. I'm not talking about for the job. I'm not talking about for the pulpit and ministry or anywhere else. I'm talking about for you. Yeah. What does God want to say to you? What does he want to show you? What does he want to pour into you? Because sometimes we miss that. And Mary, she had the best part. She had the best part sitting at the feet of Jesus. Yeah. And that's what this widow, and I believe this widow, because she was one that sought the face of God. She was a handmaiden of the Lord, and her circumstance produced a cry. And sometimes our circumstances will be so bad that the cry in Hebrew meant a shriek. Mm. Like it was from the depth. I've cried to the point before where it's just, oh, I can't even say any words. It's just a cry and a cry. And then there's been times that it's been so painful that there's no tears. That it's just a cry. And you feel it in the depths of your being. And I believe that this widow all of a sudden found herself in this circumstance. But it is not God's will for you to remain in this condition. And I'm going to say that again. That is not God's will for you to remain in the condition that you found yourself in. Because the man of God was on his way to invade the house. Mm. See, and she could have thrown up her hands and let the bondmen take her sons. Mm. She could have been like, I quit. And I'm not believing God, but a miracle was about to take place because she was about to hear a knock on the door. She was about to hear a knock on the door where Elijah shows up and Elijah's mean, his name means God is salvation and grace. God is salvation and grace. See, God provided salvation on Calvary for you, but not just to keep you saved. He wants to provide his power and his grace to you on a daily, a day, in daily activities. Yes. In daily circumstances. Each and every moment of the day, the presence of God can sweep through your house. Your house. Yes. Your house. Yes. See, I need to be renewed every single day. And the miracles that followed Elijah were the thirsty were refreshed. The poor and needy were provided for. The dead were raised. The miracles that follow the spirit of God are the hungry are fed. Yes. And the brokenhearted are healed. And the lepers are cleansed. And victory is given over the enemy. Yes. See, that's the kind of miracles that follow the spirit of God. And we, when we allow the spirit of God to invade our house, there's an overflowing wealth and provision that come. So right now, your circumstance might have sucked the 
the wind out of you. It might have shaken your faith. And that's what happened to me. I felt like the wind was just sucked right out of me. And I didn't know if I could keep going. But there was a cry that was produced. And that cry shouldn't push us towards the things of this world, but it should push us towards Christ. Amen. See, that cry didn't push her out the door. It pushed her to her knees. Amen. Let me say that again. The cry doesn't push us to the thing. And listen, running to the things in this world is easy. Yeah. It's very easy. Because it's a, it's a temporal fix. It's a temporal band-aid. Feels good for the moment. Whatever your thing might be. Your thing might not be my thing. But don't let it push you out the door. Yes. Let it push you to your knees. Yes. And allow it to create a cry in your heart that the Spirit of God can can meet and raise you up. Yes. Amen. Yes. So the woman, she presents it to the man of God, which in this case to us can be the spirit of God. Okay, the spirit of God came this morning. Yes. He wants to meet our needs this yes. morning. And the man of God listens to the problem. And he says, well, what can I do for you? <laughs> and I feel like that's what the spirit of God is saying to us this morning. He's asking us, well, what can I do for you. And she says, well, the creditor is coming. He's coming to take my kids. Satan will never cease at the effort to take the inheritance that God has given you. He'll never stop coming to, to destroy what God has given you. He wants to keep you in this state of bondage, of slavery, of oppression, of fear and poverty. But God's will is that you walk in freedom, that you walk in liberty, that you walk full of power. Amen. Why? Remind yourself who you are in Christ. If you got to get up and start declaring, I am a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Listen, David was a man of God that preached to himself. Yes. Sometimes you got to get up and preach to yourself. Yes. And say, no, I am free from sin. Yes. I am free from death. I am free from hell. I am free from destruction. No, I am free from that bondage. I am righteous. I am being sanctified. I'm not anywhere near where I should be, but I'm getting there. I'm getting there, and I'm not going to quit until I continue to go. I have not said, I think it was Naya or maybe Sabrina. It was one of them, but they were talking about there's only peace in God. There's only peace in God. You can only find peace yes. in God. You can find a temporal peace, but the only peace that can sanctify and satisfy your soul is in the presence of Christ. Yeah. Amen. There's victory over the world. Sometimes we can be like, okay, well, sin was dealt with, but what about these worldly things that I have the tendency right. Right. to turn to? Look, sin, Pastor Matt is not, he's not one that's Exempt? I'm not exempt from the world that comes to creep in and try to destroy us. No one is exempt. That's right. And when you put your guard down for a moment, that's when the enemy, when we're weary and tired, that's when the enemy wants to come in with the things of this world and dangle it like a carrot and say, come on, you can just have one taste just for a moment. I was telling a friend of mine, we were driving in the car, and I said to him, I said, would you drink a glass? drop of poison in it. Come on. No! You'd be like, no way! I wouldn't drink that water, but it's mostly water. It only has a drop of poison in it, though. And you would be like, absolutely not! But that's what we do when we entertain the things of this world. It's just a little bit of poison! It's a little bit! I can still keep going? No! If you drink enough water with poison in it, even though it's diluted, one day you will die. Yes. Right. Your spiritual walk hinges on this fact that we need to keep surrendering things to the Lord. Yes. Keep giving, yield, yield your members yes. to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. What shall I do for you? I heard your need. I heard your petition. What are you looking for me to do? The eyes of the Lord, they roam. They roam to and th throw throughout the, 
throughout the earth to show himself strong on our behalf. He's looking for someone to believe. Yeah. Right. Right. He's looking for us to believe. Not to be perfect, nope. but to believe. Yes. Yeah. Not to have it all together, but to believe. Yes. And I believe, and I, I had this on my heart for a while, but we're a church that will not bow down to the things of this world. Hello. See, Daniel said, I purpose in my heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor the wine which he drank. Daniel was fully committed. Yes. He, he made a decision. And I remember the day that I was fully committed and made a decision. And that does not mean I did everything perfect because I didn't. But my heart has been fully committed, fully in that direction, fully wanting the things of God. Daniel said, I will not defile myself. I will not allow it to come in. I will not bow down. Naya and I find ourselves all the time saying we will not bow to the things of this world. We will not bow and look and get a friend. <laughs> get a church that's going to say, I'm not going to bow. Yes. I'm not going to bow. I'm not going to bow. I'm not going to bow. Because the enemy would love to use all the things of this world to destroy your faith, but have your fix right. set on the Lord. And what is her answer? Her answer is, I don't have anything. You might have walked in this the church house this morning and says, I don't have anything. But she says, she finishes it off with, save a pot of oil. Mm. See, when you get saved and you give your heart to the Lord, the Holy Spirit comes Hallelujah. in and he invades Hallelujah. your life. Yes, he Lord. invades your very being. And there's been days as of late that I have woke up and said, Lord, I don't have anything. I don't have anything left. I don't have any way that I can see myself making it through this one. And, but the answer is, I've got a little bit of oil. <laughs> I've got a little bit of oil. And when you have a little bit of oil, when you have the power of the Holy Spirit living inside of you, God says, good. This is exactly where I want you to say to me that, God, I have nothing, nothing in my hands I bring. Simply to the cross I cling. Sometimes we're standing there saying, God, I'm holding on for dear life. And I'm not going to let go like Jacob until you bless me. Yeah. I'm holding on. I might come out with a limb. I might come out with a limb, but I'm holding on, God. I'm holding on because I just got a little bit of oil. I still believe. See, and when we can't believe, because I found myself in that position, God help my unbelief. Yes. God believe but help my unbelief yeah. help me God and he comes see the house was bare and there was nothing left but the Holy Spirit let me read this to you he's a paracletos he's the one that comes alongside yes. to oh, help hallelujah. you and what is, what is his attributes he's an instructor he's a guide he's an advisor you need help ask him you need wisdom ask him but you know sometimes we like to ask him and we're like oh did i really hear that clear yeah. <laughs> i don't know if that was god we like to do that i'm not sure if that was the lord or not and most of the time he's saying no or don't do that or you know so we're like did i really hear the lord but we have an advocate we have one that's going to go before us. We have one that's our attorney. Yes. He's the spirit of glory. He's the fire shut up in our bones. He's the spirit of life and the spirit of adoption. He's the spirit of wisdom. He's an intercessor. He's a helper. He's a caretaker. He's a comforter. He's the spirit of truth. Yes. And he will lead and guide you into all truth. What is oil used for? It's used for food. If you're hungry and you're thirsty, your spirit is dry, come to him. It's used for medicine. And I love that you said that this morning because, you know, there's some wounds that we can't go to the doctor for. Right, right. That only the spirit of God can heal those wounds. 
Only the precious oil of the Holy Spirit can move in our minds. We have some mindsets that need to be changed. We have wounds in our heart and our emotions that need to be healed. We need some things that the Spirit of God can only touch. It's used as fuel. If you were running out of gas in your car, you would go fill it up. Yes. Or it would run out of gas and you'd be sitting on the side of the road calling one of us to come pick you up. <laughs> but sometimes we need to pick each other up quiet as it's kept. We need to come alongside and pick someone up that ran out of fuel. Ask the Lord for eyes to see people that are running out of fuel in the body of Christ. Wow. Because I know sometimes I need somebody to come alongside me. I text Pastor Matt. I know he's a leader, but I send him some encouraging stuff. Because I know as a leader, in the front forefront of the people, we need to be encouraged yeah. sometimes. We need to be lifted up sometimes. Thank so ask the Lord for eyes to see people that are running out of fuel. And don't go up to him and say, I know you're running out of fuel. <laughs> Christ, okay? And God can give you a word or a song for some sometimes, but there's been times I've been like, Naya, can you just tell me it's gonna be okay and give me a hug? Like, I just need a hug, okay? And I just need to know I'm gonna be alright. And I love where Sabrina, she said, I'm okay. Yes. That is a testimony. I don't know if we're too super spiritual in here, but sometimes we gotta be like, I'm just okay. Yes. I'm okay today. Hallelujah. But you know, the best oil is the beaten oil. Come on. The beaten oil. That oil that's been pressed down. That oil that the pressures of life. Okay, when, when Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane, it was meant to an oil press. Yes. Okay, he was saying, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Yes. We will, as believers, be in the Garden of Gethsemane more times than we would hope. But God is asking us, are you going to exchange your will for mine? Yes. Are you going to allow me to have my way in your life? Are you going to give up your own plans, your own agendas, your own strength, your own mindset? The old, old ways we used to think or old things we yes. used to do. Okay, God's going to say, I want that. But in exchange, see, he's never going to take out something and leave you empty. Amen. He's always going to take out something and fill it with something That's better. Good. He's always going to give you an exchange. And his, in his exchange, it's always going to be better than what you could ever have dreamed of. But right. see, there's a process that we could go through. And through that process, you know, the, oil, the olives, they fall to the ground, which is mean to uh, surrender life. See, you can surrender your life and you can be like, okay, I'm done. I'm just going to stop there with the Lord. Yeah, I'll come to church sometimes. and But God allows us to surrender, but then he wants to yes. do some cleaning. Yes. He wants to purify us. So he, the olives are placed in this large basin and then this millstone is pressed on top of them. And the millstone is thousands of pounds. And you feel like, man, I have been going through the ringer lately, and I don't know what to do. But God is allowing this pressure so he can produce oil, so he could use you for his glory. He produces oil so we have fuel to keep going, so we can be changed. See, we can tell people all day long, I go to the Crossway ministry, we have great worship times, we have great this and that. But until somebody sees the reflection of Christ in your life, yes. they're, they're not going to right. believe. Right. Yeah. Right. See, our character, who we are, our lifestyle is when people are going to be like, wow, Angela used to be a drug addict and she's been clean for 10 years and the grace of God has yes. kept her. That's when they're going to be able to say, whoa. She doesn't act like that anymore. She doesn't react like that anymore. When I went back to New Jersey, I seen went to houses of friends that I haven't seen in 15 years. And I was not the same person this yes. go round that I was 15 years ago. But I could have walked into the house and then automatically, because of old ways, 
always been the same person and jumped in with the same lingo and acted the same way, but I wanted to stand. Yes. I'm not talking, I'm not boasting in myself. I'm just talking about what God wants to do in our lives so people can say, wait, there is a power. It's not just about church attendance That's and right. showing up and singing some songs. There's a power that wants to live through your should I go to your church? Right. You're acting the same way that you always act. You're doing the same things that you always did. Your lifestyle should be a reflection of what you're Hallelujah. saying and what's coming out of your mouth. Hallelujah. And look, you know what I say too? Is when I mess up and like the people see me mess up. Okay, because you know, God wants to deal with our mess ups behind the curtain but sometimes he'll allow things right. to be seen. Okay, so then we can, it can be a testimony. That's if right. somebody even I, I was given Naya an attitude one time. Yeah, one time. In front of Pastor Matt and all of them. And I was acting a straight fool. I really was. I was not being nice. It was not nice. But God can use that as a testimony for me to be like, I'm sorry. Pastor Matt, I'm sorry for the way that I treated Naya. Or I'm sorry for the way that my attitude was. Or I'm sorry for the way that I was acting. But you know that that shows? That we are a hospital for the broken. Yes. That we don't have to have it all together and that's what some people believe is that we need to have it all together to go before we go to church and thank God we don't thank God we don't because you are righteous by the blood of Jesus Christ and I say all that to say the beaten oil is the best oil so if you feel like you've been going through it keep believing because he's producing an exceeding weight of glory that's better than yourself. It's better than anything you could have ever came up with. And it's going to show people Christ. And you're going to be the reason that they get saved. You're going to be the reason your family stands. You're going to be the reason. Because you stood. You stood the test of time. You stood the pressures of life. You stood and you didn't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. If you don't see somebody in church, call them. Yes. Tell them don't quit. Help us. Don't quit. Yes. Don't quit. Yes. Don't quit. Yes. And don't judge them. That's right. That's right. Because you be next. That's yeah. right. I said that so ghetto. You be yeah. next. <laughs> Well, thank God I'm not like That's right. Them. Help us, Lord. We'll be in trouble. That's God right. will be picking you up next week. That's right. Because he allows us to go through some things so we can have compassion. Yes. So yes. we can have a testimony. I was talking to my friend and he said, you know, I was so high and mighty that the Lord allowed me to fall. And I said, well, look at the testimony that God built. Because you knew what it was like to be a Pharisee. But now you know what it's like to be broken. Yes. But now you know what it's like to live in the power and the Hallelujah. resurrection. Hallelujah. What Christ has given you. Yes. And when God allows us to go through some things, I can say, Pastor Matt, it is okay. We're going to be all right. We're going to keep yes. going. Hallelujah. Troy, it is all right. We're going to keep yes. going. Naya, it is yes. all right. Yes. We're going to keep going. Because in two seconds, I could be right there with you. Yes. If it wasn't for the grace of Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. If it wasn't for the keeping power. Of God, I could be right there with you. And you know what? When we approach people like that, that's when the love of God is shown, and that's when they're like, you know what? I can keep going. I can keep going. I want to serve this God that you serve. Thank you, Jesus. I need to tell this testimony. I'm sorry, Pastor Matt. We're, look, it was your fault. I told you to preach, girl. I'm preaching. I told you no time. Uh, so. I went home and visited. Naya was there for this one. She stayed with me for a little. We were like the disciples two by two. Like we were going to all these houses. It was actually pretty beautiful. And we went to my friend Kristen's house. Grew up in the church all her life. And something happened in the church. And the board, not nice things happened. But she was going to another church. Trying to find another church. Where do I belong? Where can I go? She pulled up. They pulled up to this church. And they got out of the car, and her boyfriend has tattoos all over him, which is whatever. Okay, God loves him. Yeah. And um, he comes up, 
and the people go, why are y'all here? And they said, no, listen, and they said, isn't this a church? And don't, aren't you having service? And the people said to my friends, we don't take your kind. I mean, if I could have jumped through the roof of the, of the building, I said, why? It was, I mean, my heart literally broke in my chest for my friends because that's the way that we treat people who, what? And thank God she served the Lord all her life. So she knew the Lord. But could you imagine if that was a couple that didn't at all have any experience with God at all? And they were coming in and we say, we don't take your kind here. We take all kinds. Anybody. We're all equal at the foot of the cross. Jesus doesn't see any color, any race, any gender, any mess up. He said it's covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. It's covered. It's covered. It's covered. And you be careful. We have to be careful as a body of Christ. Let there be a millstone be hung around our neck. And we be cast into the sea as we cause a little one to stumble. We should be loving. Just like when the prodigal son came back. Yes. Okay, sometimes yes. you're going to know people's business. Keep your mouth shut and love them. Yes. Love them when they come back to church. Yes. Love on them. That's a good word. I was so broken. There were so many stories that I heard, and I was like, God, help us as a body of Christ not to turn people away like that. Not to turn their hearts off towards him. Yes. And the way that we live, God help us to love. And then he said, go borrow you vessels abroad of all your neighbors, even empty vessels, and borrow not a few. The great, God's grace gives instruction, and he told her to go. If you're waiting and you don't hear go, don't go. Okay? It's very simple. <laughs> because if you go... Before you're supposed to, there will be pain. Impatience causes pain. If we are impatient, we will end up in pain. And I can testify of that, but I'm not airing that dirty laundry out. <laughs> you don't need to know, but if you impatient, it will cause pain. If you don't move when God tells you to move, it will steal from what God wants to do in your life yes. and in others. Yes. If God told you to do X, Y, or Z, and you're like, I'm not doing that. I don't want to do that. I don't, I don't think so. God, no. It will rob from you. Yes, it will. And he will allow the bees to come and stir up that nest mm. until you decide that you want to go you don't really want to go, but sometimes we don't want... There's a lot of things God's going to ask us to do that we don't want to do. But he's going to allow it to happen so that we do move forward. And you know what? His ways are higher than our ways and our, his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. So seek ye first the kingdom of yes. God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Go is a action word. Meaning move forward. Move forward in your faith. Move forward in grace. God doesn't want a stagnant people. So if you're stuck, ask him to stir you. Yes. Ask him to show you what you want. He, he wants to show you. But I do want to say this. Even though he told her to go borrow vessels, each, res, each vessel is responsible for your own oil. Amen. Each vessel is responsible for your own relationship. I can't ride off the back of Naya's relationship, and I can't ride off the back of Pastor Matt or Robert's relationship with God. I have to go get my own oil and go to the source. And it said empty vessels. Why? He doesn't want a people that are full of themselves. He doesn't want a people that are about their, their own self. 
and what they want and how they want it and how it should be. I think Pastor Matt should run the church like this. I think the worship team should sing songs like this. I think I could do a better job at this. I think I should do run my household like this. And God says, no, why don't you pray? Yes. Why don't you sit down and get the mind of God for, for your own self? Okay, because I know for myself, I sit with the Lord and ask him, how should I do this? What should I do that? Some things I want to do, some things I don't. But yield your members yes. to the things that God is telling you to do. Amen. He said, go out and borrow abroad your neighbors, even empty vessels. Borrow not a few. I said this and I'll say it again. He doesn't want to give you meager rations. He wants to give you more. There's more. There's more in Christ. There's a deeper level of peace that he wants to give you. A deeper level of provision that he wants to give you. A deeper level of healing that he wants to give you. A deeper level of the revelation of who he is. In the Old Testament, he always, so there was always a battle or there was always a giant or there was always something going on that his people had to travel through so he could reveal his name. So he could reveal who he is. So if you're traveling through something right now, there is a level that God wants to bring you to so he can reveal himself to you. And what happened? I'm going to close with this. She shut the door. See, he told her to go in and to shut the door. I'm going to tell you this this morning because this is how I felt the Lord was speaking it to me. Shut the door on some things you know that God doesn't want you to entertain. Shut the door. On some things that you know, even fear that would want to come in, like Brennan said. Shut the door on some anxiety that's been trying to overtake you. Shut the door on depression or doubt and unbelief. Yeah. Shut the door on some bondages that have been trying to take hold of you again. Yeah. Shut the door on the old man. Shut the door to these things. Christ's blood gave you the power to shut the door. Amen. And keep it shut. And she stayed there in this place in the intimacy with Christ. She shut the door to the lies. She shut to the, the door to the creditor, which was Satan coming to steal. That's right. She shut the door. She shut the door and she got on her face and she poured out over her and her sons. That's what we should be doing for us, for our families. Yes. For those of us that, for even our families that aren't here, that don't That's live it. with us, we should shut the door and pour out and pour out our hearts before the Lord and pour out yes. our hearts and pour out, shut the door, shut the door to those things that you know that God doesn't want you to have in your life. Shut the door by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. And when she did, they were filled up yes. with oil, filled up. Don't allow the things that have been robbing from you to rob. We can stand any longer. Shut the door. Shut the door and take your little bit of oil and pour it out before the Lord. Because he's going to bring an increase. An increase of oil. And if you would stand with me. Hallelujah. No, God wants to do something today and don't miss it. I know it's a longer service more than normal, but don't miss what God wants to do because he says he'll take your little bit of oil, but he's a great God. And he wants to fill you up this morning. He wants to fill you up this morning. And this altar shouldn't be a place that we're afraid of, but it should be a place where we shut everything else out and we pour ourselves out before the Lord yes. so he can do what he wants to do in our hearts yes. and in our lives. Yes. So if you have an area of your life Thank that you, you need him to touch this morning, you haven't felt like you could make it, come to the altar and let him heal, let him deliver, let him yes. set free, let him do what only he can do. If you need him to shut the door on some things in your life, allow him to do Hallelujah. it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus.